Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 6, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the analogy of reaping what is sown in kind. This session was recorded on the 31st of October 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome again to production by Jesus and Mary, I suppose you would call it. <laughs> and whether it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening at your location, we don't know, but uh, here it's good morning. It's uh, just before 11 o'clock on, uh, on our Tuesday morning. And I'm here with Mary. And Mary and I are going to go through, continue to go through a discussion that we've been having with you about the, God's laws of forgiveness and repentance. And so this is, I think, this is the sixth session of, of this discussion. And by the looks of it, we're going to be having <laughs> probably 12 sessions or thereabouts of this discussion. So we're about halfway through now of the, these, these discussions. Today's discussion is going to focus more upon the law of compensation. And in particular, we're going to look at some aspects of the law of compensation in terms of how how we reap in kind remember the law of compensation is sowing what you reap or reaping what you sow <laughs> i should say and uh, and and the, we're going to talk about how you reap what you sow in harmony with the type or flavor of what you sow today so that's our primary discussion today and uh, remember the point of all of this was so that we could eventually <laughs> answer some of our listeners questions about forgiveness and repentance because we haven't done that yet but, but we've had to have a series of discussions with you first so that we can lay a foundation or a groundwork and then eventually answer the questions using the frame, framework or foundation that we have actually covered already mm -hmm. to, to answer the questions or give some feedback to the people who have asked the questions regarding forgiveness and repentance itself. So, so that's what Mary and I are doing today with you. Hopefully you enjoy that process. And today, as I say, we're focusing on this concept of compensation and in particular one flavour of the concept, and that is that you will reap what you sow in kind or in the same flavour. And we want to discuss that with you. But before we get started discussing reaping uh, what we sow in kind, what we would like to do with you today is uh, just do a quick review. Mary and I are going to share this uh, process of yes. doing a quick review, uh, reminding you of the sessions that we've already covered. Remembering, of course, that if you are watching this session and this is the first of the sessions you're watching on forgiveness and repentance, then we suggest you go right back to the beginning, rewind right back to the beginning and start with session one. Otherwise, you probably won't uh, catch up with our conversation today if you don't do that. So we're suggesting that you go back to session one and watch session one and then session two and then session three in sequence until you get back up to this session. And, and that applies to all of our future sessions as well. So to remind you, what we're going to do is just remind you of what was in session one. So maybe Mary could do that for me. Yes. <laughs> so if we remember back to session one, we talked a lot about God, God's laws generally, how we can ever measure or know God's truth about anything because we are, were embarking on this series to tell everyone God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. So we needed to decide and let everyone know how we can actually know God's truth about anything. And then we started to speak about God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. Yes, and, and then in session two, we continued that process of discussing uh, forgiveness and repentance and God's truth about forgiveness and repentance. But we also focused your attention in session two, remember, on the emotions that are involved in forgiveness and repentance. So this is something we want to remind you about because later on we'll be talking about those emotions and, and the fact that, that it's an emotional process. Session three, we started to look at more of your personal responsibility when it comes to forgiveness and repentance. We talked about how many of us want to say that we're accidentally sinning, but how rare that actually is to accidentally sin and what the implications are for when we are truly accidental in our sin <laughs> and when we are actually sinning. 
And then, uh, then we talked about the sincerity required to undertake and um, engage with God's laws surrounding forgiveness and repentance. And then, and then in session four, we said, right, before we look at forgiveness and repentance, we've really got to start looking at what we need to forgive and repent for. Yeah. And, and so this is where we started to introduce concept of compensation again. Mm -hmm. So we started our discussion about compensation. We've already had two presentations about compensation, and we'll probably have a couple more after this session about compensation. So you get a good rounded, uh, sub, you know, idea of the subject of com compensation as it applies to laws pertaining to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. And so uh, we examine compensation itself and just some, some of the basic principles of compensation and how compensation actually works. We, we also looked a bit at the significance of compensation com in, in your earth state compared to your life after you pass as well, because obviously when you pass, there are certain compensation, compensatory things that are forced upon your recognition now that may not have been forced upon you in your life on earth due to there being some mercy displayed in your life on earth. Yes. So then in session five, as you mentioned, we spoke more about compensation. We talked about some of the additional things that you experience as a result of compensation. And we tried to help you as listeners to deal with, we tried to preempt some of your questions about, well, look, how is compensation? I don't see the effects of compensation operating in my life. What, and my emotions about giving up sin, uh, it doesn't feel that good to give up sin. And we, we talked a lot about how you can start to become sensitive to compensation and also have some more faith in this process of giving up sin. Mm. Yeah. So now that brings us to today's presentation that we would like to cover with everybody. And today what we want to do is really present a lot of examples to you. So, so you get a, a bit of a rounded view of compensation. But in particular, we're going to hone in on um, some specific subjects about firstly the benefits and rewards that we experience with regard to compensation. But, but secondly, we're going to hone in on some examples specifically pertaining to this concept that you will reap what you've sowed in a similar in a similar vein or flavor or kind of what you sowed so so in other words if you sowed something of a specific kind then you're probably going to reap something related to that kind of thing that you sowed and this uh, this is a very important principle to understand and we'd like to go through that with you now Introduction to Compensation and Sowing and Reaping in Kind. Hmm. So in this session, what we're going to do, we've already introduced a few sessions ago, this analogy of what it means to, how compensation can be viewed as sowing and reaping. Hmm. What we do has effects, there's a cause and effect thing happening and there's compensation for our condition hmm. at all times. Hmm. Today we want to hone in on some more specifics to help us really understand the qualities of how compensation is happening in our life mm. and to understand the, the, um, the specificity of it and the, <laughs> the reliability of it. Mm. And in coming sessions, we'll talk some more, we'll talk, use some other analogies to, to, to help our listeners understand that as well. Mm. But today in this session, we're going to look at what it means to reap, uh, to sow and reap in kind and how we are always compensated in kind mm. uh, according to what we're sowing. Mm. So we'll define that very well. Mm. Um, and then what we're going to do is look at the predictability and the reliability of compensation in kind. Mm. It's and probably important at this stage, isn't it, to, to remind the listeners of a number of things. If the first thing I feel we need to remind them is, of course, all of God's laws and principles are consistent, reliable, predictable. <laughs> and, and this is something that we need to remind everyone because it, there is this underlying th feeling on earth that everything is sort of like chaos. Yes. You know, there's no way that I can say, well, if I've got a certain illness, then that means I have a certain problem. You know, there's, there's no belief in that currently on the planet. No. And, and yet God's laws are basically saying, yes, if you have a certain problem in your body, uh, everything is predictable. So, so mm -hmm. if two people have the same problem in their bodies, 
then it's probably because of the same, it's not probably, it is because of the mm -hmm. same emotion existing within them. Mm -hmm. And and the intensity of that illness in that specific location will depend on the intensity of that emotion that's in them and how yeah. much they're denying that emotion. And this is all very predictable and reliable and, and, and uh, very much able to be, uh, we can determine what we need to do about it based yes. on its predictability and reliability. So. We need to remind everybody about that firstly. Mm. And and very often we want to fight and argue with that uh, and yet as a truth, and yet it actually cr creates a lot of, um, we can problem solve if we if we understand that principle and, and we have faith in it. Mm. But we will talk uh, then following this in the session why it often appears that we aren't uh, the, these things aren't reliable and predictable, or it seems like we're not reaping what Yeah, why is there the appearance of unreliability? Yes. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk a bit about it, it being only an appearance based upon what happens in the world and the world's way of seeing things. There's a, there's a second part that we would like to raise, isn't there, too, and that is just to remind everybody again that the purpose of this conversation is to lead us to this discussion about forgiveness and repentance. So, so what we're doing here is examining the laws of compensation, which particularly apply because we're refusing to re forgive and repent. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that these things that happen to us, the things that are trying to correct us or reward us, depending upon our bad, uh, good or you know our bad or good behavior respectively so mm -hmm. the correction you know, because of our unloving behavior and the reward because of our loving behavior in a lot of ways these are trying to assist us to get to the stage of voluntarily going yes. through a process of growth while, rather than resisting growth now compensation is a tool that god uses to, to help those people who are resisting growth. And the majority of our listeners are still in the phase yeah. where they are resisting growth and therefore having to have the laws of compensation applied to them because they're not engaging the higher laws where they voluntarily are choosing to grow and choosing to know what God's truth is about these matters. So we need to remind all of you as listeners that it's very important that you understand that the reason for this discussion is to show you where you're not voluntarily going into a process of forgiveness and repentance and so therefore the laws of compensation must apply to you. <laughs> That's right and we're spending quite a bit of time on the issue of compensation within the context of forgiveness and repentance because as you say it's to lead us it's god's mechanism really to lead us towards those more voluntary uh, desire-based um mm. processes but as you mentioned the reality is almost every single person in the world well every single person in the world is dealing with compensation every single day yes. and so it's incredibly relevant but also because the vast majority, the vast majority are actively resisting the processes of forgiveness and repentance. Mm. The effects of, of compensation are compounded. And so a lot of the problems that we see on the planet today are all as a result of compensation, are they not? Yes. And, and this is the thing we, we need to remind the listeners is that what we observe in, in our day to day interactions with our brothers and sisters is the majority of times there is not this underlying intention or desire to solve a problem, but rather there is a resistance to solving the problem, almost in every case, and particularly in the cases where we're heavily, heavily involved in our addictions. And so when we're heavily involved in our addictions, it's like we're, we're, we need some external thing to say to us, this is not working out for you. <laughs> <laughs> and and instead of us instead of us voluntarily wanting to be loving what we're doing what what's really happening is we're being pulled into being loving through the law mm -hmm. now obviously that's not the ideal the ideal is that we are voluntarily we desire to be loving not governed by law but because we want to in our mm -hmm. hearts and that's where what the laws are trying to lead us to to this point where we want to mm -hmm. in our heart we want to be in a different condition and we want to work our way through our problems and 
we want to experience our emotions and we want to release our, our you know our hurts that we've had from others in other words forgive or we want to release the, our desire to hurt others in other words repent mm -hmm. and and we need we need to understand that the, that the laws of conversation are just there as a tool to lead us to this point where we desire this yes. in, in, in our heart rather than being resistive towards it. Mm -hmm. And what we notice is that people who've been coming to our seminars for many, many years, sometimes ne it's nearly a decade now where we have recorded conversations with people and, and almost all of the people who we know still are working through issues of conversation rather than it really engaging a desire. Mm. And once you really engage a desire, it's almost like the law of conversation no longer needs to operate for you. Yeah. But, but unfortunately, uh, for the majority of people, it has to operate because there is not, the desire isn't present. And in particular, it's the desire to love. And remember, it's the desire to love, firstly, God, secondly, yourself, mm -hmm. uh, and then your other half of yourself, yeah. and then thirdly, other people, and then fourthly, the environment itself. And, and the law of compensation is going to act to correct every problem in those areas. Yeah. And, uh, and if we could enter a desire-based state, then we would not need the law of compensation to operate in this regard. But unfortunately, most of us are pretty resistive, and so we do need it. <laughs> and that's the, way it, that's the way it is. That's the way it is. So, so the discussion about the law of compensation will help us understand what it is that we are not forgiving and mm -hmm. what it is that we are not repentant for. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why the, the discussion on conversation is so important. Yeah, mm. yeah, fantastic. Yes, and so today we're going to focus, we're going to hone in on this one uh, aspect that yep. we, of which we can understand about conversation, and that is uh, what it means to reap in kind. Mm. Compensation and what it means to reap in kind. In relation to God's principles of compensation, what does it mean to reap in kind? Well, it's, it's quite simple, really. Is that if I have a particular thought, a word, action, intention, or desire, remember we, we are classifying all of those things that we could have within us right from thoughts right, right the way through to actions and everything that happens in between as behaviour. So if I have a certain type of behaviour of a certain flavour or kind, then simply put, if, if, if that behaviour is in harmony with love, I will be rewarded in a similar way or in a way that extends my original behaviour in that kind. So, so, so if I have a specific flavour of ethics, then I'll be rewarded with the same kind of specific flavour. Of, of rewards relating to those ethics. Conversely, if I have thoughts, words, actions, intentions or desires, you, which we are still remember labeling as behavior. Yes. So if I have a specific type of behavior that's unloving, then I will be penalized in kind in relation to that unloving behavior. And that's simply all it means to, and when we say in kind, it's the same type or flavour or topic or, or quality, subject. Or quality or... Yes, and, yeah. or, and also intensity. Yes. So, so if I have a very low intensity, bad behaviour, then obviously there'll be a low intensity result. Mm. But if I have a high intensity bad behaviour, there'll be a high intensity result. Whether it's positive or negative will depend upon its flavour, whether it's in harmony with love or out of harmony with mm -hmm. love. But with relation to in kind, it's specifically about the quality, the type, the area, the the um, the flavour, as you call it. Yes, yeah. it's hard, isn't it, to yes. describe because we need to give examples, and that's and we why we'll be giving yeah. a lot of examples today yeah. about that subject. But if we can see it as a p particular type of behaviour that we have with a particular flavour to it, mm -hmm. you can, it's going to result in a similar reward of the same type. Now, if we put it back in terms of the analogy, we can see that if we sow wheat, then we will reap wheat. Yes. If we sow a fruit tree, or orange, let's say, yeah. fruit tree, then we're going to reap oranges. We're not going to reap you know, mangoes from yeah. an orange tree. Yeah. So this is how the sowing and the reaping are linked by the type or flavour or, mm -hmm. or the character, the fruit, 
if you like. So uh, to put it very simply, um, to use a more human example, if I sow violence, I'll reap violence. Yes. That kind of a thing. That's right. If I yep. sow sexual immorality, I will reap sexual immorality. If I sow ethics, I will reap ethics. Yes. There, there's a relationship between what I sow and what I reap. And just as there is a relationship in all of the natural environment between a seed that is planted and what it grows into. Mm -hmm. And you could say the seed that is planted is, is, there's a whole heap of genetic laws that control what it grows into. You can't hope to plant a wheat and get a barley seed mm -hmm. or barley seeds as a, as a result. And, 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 if, and in fact, as we'll see later, you can't hope to to not plant and get something either. <laughs> so that, that, so that, that's the, a different It's a different subject session. altogether, yep, which yep. we'll be covering in a different yep. session. But you can see there's a whole there's a whole series of things we need to discuss about this matter. Mm -hmm. You know, if you only sow a little bit of seed, so that instead of sowing a, enough seed to fill a crop, you, you only sow one seed every few metres, then you're only going to get one stalk of <laughs> grain, grain and, every few metres. And we talk about that aspect of compensation in a whole other session Correct. as well. Correct. So, so you can say that's sowing sparingly. But yeah. But, but here we're talking about the flavour, in other words, the genetics of it. Yes. If you could liken it to yeah. a physical one. We're talking about the genetics of it. What What is the shy shape, size, shape, size and quality, and quality uh, design, features. design features of what you sowed? <laughs> And that is what you're going to reap. It's is. like a reproductive cycle that's that's inherent in in your thoughts, behaviour, words, actions, intentions, correct desires. Correct. Yeah. So if everyone just relates it back to the fact that if I sow uh, orange uh, seed, then I'll reap an orange tree. Then, and and if I sow a mango seed, I'll reap a mango tree. And if I sow wheat, I'll reap wheat. Then as long the same... as it's not genetically modified <laughs> wheat. <laughs> well, if it's genetically modified wheat, you'll get a genetically modified... Well, you won't get wheat from... <laughs> no, you'll get a genetically modified thing. You know, there is genetically modified seed and that grows into a genetically yeah. modified plant. You, yeah. Know? Yeah. you will get what you sowed in every case and there's laws in yeah. that, that it dictate that. And that's what we're stating here. There are specific laws that dictate that when you sow, yes. you will reap in a similar flavour or kind to what you sowed. Yeah. Mm. yeah, excellent. The reliability of compensation and reaping in kind. Mm. So most people really don't understand just how exacting and reliable compensation and the compensatory laws, the operation of the compensatory laws is, do yeah. they? So what I'd like to do in this section is ask you a series of questions to really hone in on that and really ask you to be clear about just how reliable <laughs> compensation and reaping in kind is. Yes, and perhaps before we proceed, we just made it need to make a general comment, and that is all of God's laws are predictable and reliable. And they are predictable and reliable just like a genetic see, you know, the genetic structure is predictable and reliable. If you have a certain genetic structure, you end up with a certain outcome. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly the same principle with regard to all of God's laws, that all of God's laws define what happens. And, and so we can't assume that we can get away with anything here. And this is where we see a lot of people yeah. believe they are getting away with things on earth, but it's only a belief. It's not even real on earth, because if they truly measured the results of or, or the outcomes of what they're doing, they'd see they're not really getting away with anything. And this is what we need to discuss. But at this stage, it's important to understand God's laws, all of them are predictable and reliable. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as a law that you can modify or change, right? So while you might be able to get away with man's laws and you might be able to modify it, you might be able to skip over it and you might be able to weasel your way out of it, <laughs> None of those things can happen with God. <laughs> <laughs> and we're very good at self-deception, de aren't we? Where yes. we, we can tell ourselves that uh, our compensatory effect is not happening in our life or we engage in other addiction to avoid the sensation of that. But very often when we're real uh, and more sensitive, mm. the compensation is very evident, isn't it? Of course, but, but what we often do too is we... Uh, we say, yes, those bad things are happening to me, but it's not my fault. Mm. It, it's somebody else's fault. It's not, it's not the fact that I am doing something unloving against the law. Mm -hmm. It's got to be some other reason. 
And most of the time, we prefer to even have it as a reason we don't know. Mm. <laughs> like, th there is a underlying desire in humanity to not know what the reason is. Yeah. So that way, we don't have to do anything about it. <laughs> and, we, and we certainly don't have to uh, deal with or, or address the underlying causes of it. And that's where we're very resistive. We, if we have certain unloving behaviours which we desire to engage, most of the time we don't want to give them up. Mm -mm. And this is where we're not very honest with ourselves. And, and as a result, we prefer to have ignorance about the results even, to even say, oh, there are no results related to that. It's just that I've got this other problem, but, you know, that's something to do with God's weird, you know, that's nat nature does that, you know. Yes. Some, some undefined thing does that, you know. And yet I find that reasoning very illogical because the reality is when it comes to nature, we can see that everything in nature is pretty, is pretty like, Exact. Exact. And, and, and this is how we can do things like have technology that is reliable. Mm -hmm. Because there are certain things that are, all things are very exact. When the law, the law is applied to all things and they're very exact. And so if everything in the physical level is exact, why is that not the case with everything else, including our spiritual and emotional life? Mm. And the reality is it's all exact. Mm. And we need to remember that. Yeah. So that's the comment about the law in general. <laughs> you probably okay. want to get onto some specifics now about the conversation. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Compensation in kind is predictable and reliable. Are there any exceptions or circumstances where I wouldn't reap in kind? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, no, there's none. It, as, I, as I said about the laws generally, compensation is, a, is a, one of God's laws that is utterly predictable, reliable, exacting. It, it's, it's, it's entirely predictable every single time based upon what's going on as a thought, a desire, word or action or behaviour. So, so at the end of the day, no, there is nothing. There, there's no way that something, even a so-called accident, Mm. has happened as a result of a specific series of events that are all governed by law mm. and uh, and we need to understand it yeah if we are going to have a happy life at least <laughs> <laughs> uh, the you remember we talked in our past uh, discussion about conversation about time delays and mm -hmm. or or the delay between what happens at the soul and what happens at the physical level and yeah. so forth. Obviously, there's a lot of considerations to the law because the law applies specifically to the soul of the person, not mm. to the body or the spirit body. Mm. And so we need to understand that while it instantly applies to the soul, you may not see the results in your physical or spiritual bodies until after a specific period of time. Mm. And, and we talked about all the reasons why that yes. may occur. So, so that, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not exact. It is exact. It is going to, <laughs> yes. if you do a specific thing, there's always a soul based, uh, something that happens to the soul yeah. that, uh, that automatically will occur every single time if you do that same thing every single time. Mm -hmm. But there may be uh, delays in terms of you seeing the results of that in your body and yes. your physical body and your spiritual body. And even in your relationships, right? There may be situations where you are holding on to an unloving attitude, but because the will of others is involved, it, it takes some time for that to be exposed within a relationship. And then there's a... Yeah, if you lived with a person who had no injuries at all and was living completely in harmony with all of God's laws, mm -hmm. It would be instantly it. reflected to you every time. Yes. But the majority of us are living with a, people who are like exactly like ourselves in yes. that we all want to delay things as much as possible. <laughs> and there's a tendency most pe in most people in relationships to not tell the truth about how they feel and not show how they feel and not truly be open about how they feel. And a lot of times they think they're showing how they feel, but it's not how they feel. It's how their hurt feels or mm -hmm. how their facade feels. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, you know, we don't see the results instantly, but if we were living with a person who is completely in harmony with the law, we'd we'd see the result instantly, Instant. even in a relationship. Yes. Um, so so these are, all of the results would be instant, but it, but only if we're living in harmony with God's ways of doing things. Yes. Yeah. 
but we are saying here, aren't we, that it's, it is reliable though, whether it happens, whether we're aware of it immediately or not, the in-kind part of the compensation is completely will reliable. reliably happen. Yes. And this yeah. gets like your comment about awareness is very important because, you know, most of us are not aware. Mm. And so therefore we're a bit clueless about what's going on. And where there is a deep need in society to become educated so we can become aware. And, and a lot of our problems would dissipate in society quite rapidly if we all chose to be aware. Mm. Um, and so the point of view of awareness again is, do we have a desire for awareness? Mm -hmm. Or do we have a desire for ignorance? Mm. And I, I feel the majority of society at this stage has a desire for ignorance. Yeah. Because ignorance helps us continue to sin without believing there is any consequence. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Compensation in kind applies to all aspects of my existence. Mm. Do I sow in kind according to all of my soul's energy systems? So by this question, I actually mean, you know, do my thoughts create a specific harvest of thoughts? Do my intentions create a harvest of intentions? And if I apply that to my words, my desires, my actions, my emotions, um, so it's, it's, um, it's in kind according to the actual part of my soul that's that's in operation. Mm, yes, so that's very true. So if you have a specific thought, that is going to create more thoughts of that kind generally, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's going to create not only more thoughts in you, but if you now state them, mm -hmm. in other words, you now have words that are in harmony with the thoughts. Now there's a tendency for those thoughts to now be encouraged in others. So now that they then have thoughts of their own. Yes. So that's a part of that harvest, if you like, of the thoughts that you began or created. And the same applies, of course, if you turn your words into actions, mm -hmm. you know. And so, so, so you can see some examples of that. Let's say you're a religious leader and you're encouraging people to harm other, people of other religions mm -hmm. right? or people who don't have a religious faith then basically what you're doing is you've you've had thoughts inside of yourself which have driven from your desires and motivations you've now had the thoughts those thoughts have now turned into words you're very you know enthusiastic about this because it all comes from your desires mm -hmm. now god's laws are trying to correct it already but 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 those words now that you're speaking will create thoughts in other people and those people might then have words and then actions that they take as a result of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And those things will all be attributed to your thoughts. Yes. And your action, which come from your desires, of course. Yeah. So you can see there's a flow on effect and, and it's not only a flow on effect with thoughts producing thoughts, but thoughts can produce words, which then can produce behavior that we can, that they can produce the desires of other kinds as well. So. That each thing is like a, a course of action. It's like a it's like changing the course of a river, if mm -hmm. you like, where the river might be flowing in its natural course down to the sea, but you've decided now that you're going to take the course on a different direction entirely. And and this is what we're really doing. Many days or every day of our life, we make these little tiny decisions mm -hmm. which form the basis for future actions and behavior. And, and also finish up triggering further desires or feelings within ourselves, mm -hmm. which then can, can either increase in goodness or lovingness, if you like, or can increase in evil mm. and therefore cause our own destruction as well as the destruction of others. So we need to understand that compensation applies to every aspect of our soul and, and it has a flow on effect, as we've previously discussed in some of our previous com uh, discussions about conversation in this series. Mm -hmm. It has a flow on effect and an effect on other things. We, we called it, what, what was the name we gave it? I can't quite remember it now. Um, it was such yeah, that as was a month ago now. <laughs> it's, a, it's, not, it's not just a time delay effect, but it's like this 
this effect, a compounding, the compounding effect, effect, effect said, yeah, that yeah. then has on uh, other things. Yeah. It, it was just our last conversation, so I should remember it. But I can't <laughs> well, remember I'm it for equally life. guilty. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to ask you some follow-up mm-hmm. questions mm-hmm. on that. Um, so you, you mentioned very briefly there that um, our thoughts are generated by our desires. So that seems to be quite crucial to this discussion because I know that there's a lot of philosophies in mainstream psychology, in uh, New Age philosophy, in certain Eastern uh, philosophies that talk about the quality of your thoughts and changing the quality of your thoughts or the type or the in kind, the the flavor of your your thoughts, and that being a positive, um, powerful way to change the quality of your life uh, and your happiness. Um, so, could you respond to that in in relation to compensation in kind? Because it's, I yeah, could well, for- interpret your answer to say if I just think happy thoughts, um, then I'll have more happy thoughts and everything will be happy. Yeah, well, that, that, there is a certain truth to that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not completely truthful because it doesn't take into account your desires and your, your underlying yes. motivations. But, but let, let's give some examples uh, to sort of further clarify. Let's say we have uh, an underlying motivation or desire of some kind. Let's say it's to, um, well, one that's common for people today, I want to have sex, right? <laughs> For a lot of people, it doesn't really matter with whom. I just want to, you know, I have this horny feeling, they say, <laughs> that you um, you want to get rid of, basically, yeah. and, and you need somebody else to help you do it. Basically, that's the underlying feeling or concept, right? Now, that feeling comes from somewhere, mm-hmm. right? That uh, That usually has to do with feelings that you have about yourself and feelings that you have about, you, you know, um, how you feel about yourself and your worth, your sexual worth and... You've, you know, whether people approve of you, whether you're accepted in society, there's a lot of things that influence your desire mm-hmm. to, to engage sexually with another person. But let's say you have, you have that desire. Now, you could choose, you could exercise your will to, to not focus on satisfying that desire unless it's ethical yes. or moral. Yeah. Now, remember, there's a difference between ethics and morals, too. Mm -hmm. With ethics, we're talking about whether the other person who you're doing it with wants to and they're of an age where they could easily make up their own mind and so forth. That's ethics. So, and so, during the exchange, treating the person and, in a way that you would want to be treated and those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah. assuming you want to be treated in a loving manner, because so some people don't. And obviously, <laughs> yes. that's not what we're applying here. So, so ethics is where... You're applying the same rules towards yourself and another party. Mm-hmm. That's not the same as morals. Morals is God's viewpoint of what's moral. And, mm-hmm. and I, I, the irony of what God views as moral is really that we should all just be having sex only with our soulmates. Yeah. So that's the purity view of God's morals, yes. if you like. Now, if we're in harmony with ethics and morality, we're going to be very, very happy if we engage these desires, sexual mm-hmm. desires. But... but we could now choose we've got free will we can choose we can choose are we going to engage them in harmony with our with loving desires Mm -hmm. or are we going to choose to engage them in disharmony in in, in the lack of love what are we going to do now that is a choice that also comes from within and that thoughts can help us establish so by thinking well do i want to be close to god or not do i want to have happiness in your life or not do i want to um, have the results the painful results of sin in my life or not can help us make that decision Mm -hmm. as to what our future choice may be Mm -hmm. now let's say i have a feeling that i would like to engage sexually with somebody but i know that that person's not my other half Mm -hmm. or i doubt that they are or i'm not even sure that they are and then why would i do it and um, obviously, if I was purely in harmony with ethics and morals, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. If I am just in harmony with ethics, I might. Mm-hmm. Right? But, but either way, my thinking does play a part in that decision. Yes. So, so while the underlying desire comes from an emotions or groups of emotions within us, my thoughts do play a role 
yes. in what future decisions I may make. Mm -hmm. And if I feed my thoughts yes. with approval, in other words, I have a thought, I just want to have sex with anybody, and then I feed that thought with approval from other beliefs, including, oh, I'm a man. I should be able to just have sex with anybody or whatever other beliefs that are false. Oh, it's not realistic. I'll never meet my soulmate. This is crazy. Yeah, all what's the point of, of waiting? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, all this kind yeah. of stuff. And I'm not cool while I'm waiting. Everybody thinks I'm an idiot, you know, waiting and all this kind of stuff. These kind of thoughts can help you switch your desires. Yes. And, and Or switch your actions. Or switch your actions, which then feed your desires yeah. so so you can't sort of view thoughts as a um independent mm -hmm. concept which most people have a tendency to do and um, most people who you know talk about this philosophy of changing your thoughts and therefore changing your life don't don't understand the relationship between thoughts and the actual causes of emotions and it's emotions which basically drive most of your thinking yeah. and the and the ways in which you think yeah. so the compensation does apply to all aspects of my existence but we must understand that each aspect of my existence my thoughts my words my behavior my desires my intentions all of those my, pa my passions if you like they all interrelate with each other in su to such a way and that is driven by my will mm, my desire my desire oh, and my will my current my, condition. Cu my current condition yes. drives it and also my faith, my desire for what I want in the future drives it. There, yes. There's a number of factors yeah. which determine my decision making. And conversation, of course, applies to all of those things because <laughs> God wants to bring our desires into harmony with love. He wants to bring our intentions into harmony with love. He wants to bring our thoughts into harmony with love. He wants to bring our words into harmony with love, our actions into the harmony with love. So God's laws of compensation are acting upon every single aspect of my soul. And, and we can't consider any one of them independent of the others. No. Okay, few other clarifiers. <laughs> It's for the sake of our viewers. Yeah. So um, I feel that that's clear in the case, in the example that you gave, um, that if a person has, so really you talked about the difference between their will and their desire, their current emotions and their faith in something that could be different, yes. and those two things interacting. Yes. But to go back to the example of reaping in kind, mm -hmm. you're back, uh, to paraphrase, I think you're saying that I'm going to have compensatory effects, both rewarding and penalising in that case. If I have the current condition, the emotion that I would like to engage sexually, but I have a higher aspiration Just to... Just be careful now. Well, Our current condition is already the reaping of the compensation. Mm -hmm. Remember, compensation is applied immediately. So as soon as I have a desire inside of me, the compensation is immediately implied to my soul. So, so it's not a future thing. No. So the compensation in kind will be occurring upon my current condition. Right now. Right now. Yes. Um, and so that other aspiration that I have perhaps to be moral. So the desire that, to be moral. Yes. Which is a faith-based desire. Yes. That will have a different compensatory in-kind effect. Correct. Occurring concurrently. Correct. And you, those two things can be occurring concurrently. Yes. So you can actually have concurrently something trying to correct your current condition mm -hmm. and rewarding your desire for a future condition mm -hmm. at the same time yes. <laughs> with the same issue yes <laughs> even. and this is where some people get a bit confused about it of course because they they're not understanding how firstly current condition determines a lot of things and desires or faith determines a lot of things mm -hmm. and and if you once you understand current condition and faith for a future condition and you understand how separate they are to each other yeah. you can start measuring the results of each of each yes. potential the 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 compensation effects that you currently have as a result of your current condition uh -huh. for example and also the new rewards you're experiencing as a result of your newly engaged condition whether it's positive or negative it, there'll be a new series of events occurring okay mm. 
just finally. Mm -hmm. So let's not talk about a physical action example now, but if it's very common that people who have low self-esteem are uh, given, they go to a psychologist and they're told your problem is your thoughts, you need to start thinking better about yourself and you can change your thoughts and keep a journal of thoughts and replace those thoughts with other thoughts, uh, the negative thoughts with more positive thoughts. And you and I have talked about this in private, it, it, that it, to some degree that has a, a positive effect, but you always relate it to a more of a truth-based. So for example, me holding on to a negative idea about myself that came from my mother um that's not if i continue to repeat that to myself i'm not telling myself the truth about myself am i no so it's not about just changing things on a whim it's about having a feeling for truth mm. and then and then using my thought so my desire I guess I'm asking for clarity, is it my desire for the truth about the situation that then helps me to analyse my thoughts and to stop making as negative messages to myself? Or? I, I don't think it's just that. Often it's pain. You know, yes. often pain motivates us to change. And so yeah. in most cases, a person who, in the example you gave, a person who visits a psychiatrist generally is feeling emotional pain, which is great. You know, yeah. they're starting to feel the pain that they are mm -hmm. having emotionally. Whereas a lot of people who refuse to go to a psychologist are refusing to see the pain they're in. Yeah. So a person decides that oh, I want to see the pain I'm in, but I'm not sure what, what the cause of that is. And they go to psychologists. Or I'm not coping with it. Yeah, yeah. and they go to psychologists and, and they start talking about their worth. And the psychologist might say, well, yes, you obviously from this it demonstrates to me that you have a low sense of yourself, your own mm. worth. Now... The trouble with a low sense of worth is it can come from many things. And one primary thing it comes from is being treated badly as a child in particular or as you're, as you're growing up. Now, unless the psychologist focuses the attention of the person on how they've been treated badly, mm -hmm. the posit all the positive thoughts in the world won't release the emotions associated with how they've been treated badly. Mm -hmm. So they might every day engage a process of writing down positive thoughts about themselves, but unless they feel about how badly they've been treated and actually go through the emotions associated with how badly they've been treated, those thoughts will have very little positive outcome because the underlying emotion still remains saying, I feel badly about myself. Mm -hmm. Now, feeling badly about yourself is a sin and God's laws are trying to correct it. God, yeah. God wants you to feel good about yourself, yes. in other words. Yeah. And he's trying to correct that you feel, you know, if you feel bad about yourself, he will try to correct that through a, a lot of things, trying to correct your viewpoint of yourself. And in particular, he would be trying to help you see the pain you're causing yourself by mm -hmm by um, so treating yourself or, or seeing yourself badly. Now, those pains come from things that happened in your past, mm -hmm. which unless you release the emotional signature of, no amount of positive thinking is going to get you above them. Mm -hmm. right? And this is where we need to understand that the motivations emotionally because they are not being released, mm -hmm. are going to continue to have power until they're released. And therefore, we're going to be in a negative compensation for not or for refusing to release those emotions. Mm. So, so let's say I've been treated badly as a child. I was attacked and abused or whatever as a child. I now have quite poor opinion of myself as, uh, as an adult. Mm -hmm. My refusal to grieve about the treatment, which is a refusal to do something God's way, mm -hmm. which is a sin, which is something that needs to be compensated for, and the thing that we will, we will be penalised for is that we'll have those emotions remaining within us and they will dictate how I feel about myself. So if we loop back around now, because we're talking about the compensation in kind applying to all 
aspects of my existence. What is the compensation in kind for the thoughts? Because remember, we've said, no, if I have these positive thoughts, I will have an in-kind compensation. So it seems to me you're saying the emotion, super, the compensation on the emotion supersedes the thoughts or is it? No, too, no, no I'm saying like complex? if you decide now, you go on to the psychologist and the psychologist says, you think badly about yourself and you go, yeah, I do. And now after that, there's highly likely you will start catching yourself thinking badly about yourself. Mm -hmm. Whereas before then you didn't, mm -hmm. right? There's a positive benefit now yep. or a positive compensation of the truth of the thought. Uh -huh. In other words, you're now catching your negative thoughts yep. and seeing how they are negative. Mm -hmm. You still may not know where they come from. Yep. And by just going, oh, I'm going to write down a heap of positive thoughts. Yes. It doesn't address where the negative ones came from, right? So I'm still not doing that. But at least now I can see, at least with my thoughts, yep. that there is a problem of with some kind thoughts. here with my thoughts. Yep. Now, you could, if you decide to do nothing else than that, you'll have the reward yep. of now seeing that your thoughts are problematic. So my in-kind compensation is that my thoughts are of a certain quality. I'm looking, I'm aware now that I'm having, I'm having these negative thoughts about myself. And so my... And I know that something's wrong with them. I'm aware there's a problem with that. Mm -hmm. And so the in-kind compensation, I would logically say then, would be that I would grow more and more aware of the problem with my thoughts because that, it, that seems to be an in-kind kind of a compensation. Correct. My thoughts of awareness are building more thoughts of awareness. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. But it still hasn't changed my emotions because that's a <laughs> whole, I've got to do that emotionally. Well, there's an in-kind compensation happening with the unfelt emotions. Correct. To foster more unfelt emotions. Correct. Which is, or to protect your unfelt emotions yeah. and so forth. Yes, which in order to do that, you have to stop feeling emotions. Correct. So you're, that's, I can see that's also in kind. I'm shut, I've shut down certain emotions and in order I to maintain the penalty. that. I, that's what I'm sowing, yes. the shutdown. So my reaping is more shutdown of emotions, more shutdown And of also emotions. more resistance to emotion. And also, also I now store the emotion in me and they hurt me. Yes. And that, that's a part of the penalty. Yes. Part of the penalty of not feeling the emotion is that you store them mm -hmm. and they hurt you. Mm -hmm. They hurt you physically and emotionally. And, and that's a conversation in kind as well. Yeah. So, so you can see on one hand, I could have some positive thoughts, mm -hmm. which I'll be rewarded for. But in the same moment, I can have some negative emotions, which I'm shutting down and not feeling, which I'm going to be penalized for. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this Great. is where people find it a bit confusing, but it is quite clear. You can trace these things back to their original sources. If you know everything about the law and you feel everything about the law and you're connected to the law as God intends us to be, you'd be able to chase back everything every thought back to its inception, every, every feeling back to its inception and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's going to help your life markedly, obviously. And if you can get rid of those ones that are out of harmony with love, then all the pain and suffering also is now removed from your life. Yeah. So that's the benefit of having compensation in that regard. Yeah. Mm. No, that's fantastic. Thank you mm. very much. I think we can now see that this compensation in kind, it's very specific even to our thoughts, words. It, it's specific to each category of of our existence yeah and yeah. all of that and all of our different types of behavior mm -hmm. can be can be can associated to some causal event yeah. of a similar type of behavior yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how many words we have to use to explain something that's so simple and reliable yes yeah, so well this is the trouble they're trying to get across the concepts without being able to have people feel the concept is that, uh, you know, obviously the closer you get to God, one of the, and this is a side point, but, but one of the benefits of having a relationship with God is the closer you get to God, the more open you are emotionally and the more open you are to uh, understanding everything without it having to go through word after word after yeah. word, trying to, do, trying to discuss it to get the flavor of it. Yeah. But we understand that it's important if we're going to explain to people who are not yet developed enough to uh, have that connection with God and understand it in their soul, mm -hmm. to understand the laws in their soul, 
that they're going to need some additional help of words and, and illustrations and examples in order to understand these particular concepts. To help people become aware. Mm. And just a reminder here as well that the primary way that we, from, our, from the world-based condition, you know, sort of individuals on the world right now, the primary way that we will start to engage that relationship with God is by engaging with forgiveness and repentance. Yes, but remember, forgiveness and repentance is an emotional process. Exactly. And so if I'm shutting down my emotions, uh, obviously, you know, I'm not going, it's not going to work. If also, I don't want to be aware of compensation, I'm never going to engage. It. True. Yeah. And also, if I, uh, forgiveness and repentance is a desire based process which is a, not just an aspect of our will, which is our current condition, but rather what we desire for our future. Yes. And unless we have some positive desires for our future, that's highly unlikely we'll feel our emotions or engage the processes of forgiveness and repentance. So yeah. under those circumstances, compensation is going to be the tool, mm -hmm. the primary tool, in fact, by which God will help us come to the conclusion that our pain and suffering is caused by our resistance to our personal growth and happiness. Yeah. 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 Mm. Why people on earth appear to reap things that they haven't sown. <laughs> so in this discussion, we're talking about compensation mm -hmm. and reaping and sowing in kind specifically. And we've said it's predictable. And reliable. <laughs> and reliable. And it, you can't get away from it. <laughs> exactly. It's definitely going to happen. Yeah. So why is it then, if we always reap in kind, that it seems like some people who haven't given much um, and, have, and haven't done much good in their life seem to get a lot of good things and have a lot of things, because that would seem to oppose the idea that we reap in kind. Well, firstly, we need to make some comments about what people on earth believe is good. Um, what people on earth believe is good is not what God believes is good. And frequently what the person is getting, which is exactly what they have sowed, you know, they're reaping exactly what they've sowed. Other people might see it as good, but it's actually not very good at all from God's perspective. They are actually reaping, sowing a lot of badness and reaping a lot of badness. A good example of that would be, uh, let's say a person, a, a person grows up in their childhood to expect that they can just get everything on a on a platter. You know, like mum, their mum and dad, due to their own emotional injuries, mum and dad have made it so the child doesn't have to work, the child doesn't have to do anything. You know, for for its survival. The child doesn't have to demonstrate any self responsibility. The child can always rely on mummy and daddy for everything. The child doesn't have to, you know, go out and earn a living or contribute to society in any way. Mummy and daddy do that for them. Yeah. And so by the time that child is an adult now, the child may have a, a very, from the outward appearance, people on earth may believe that child has an idealistic existence. Because they do, they, because of their entitled feeling, they what they well mummy and daddy are still looking still after them looking they after are still them. Yeah, and if not mummy and daddy then other they would have attached themselves through the law of attraction to other people who will look after them yeah they they might have money that they've uh, received from mummy and daddy mummy and daddy have worked real hard mm -hmm. they haven't spent their money and so they gave it all to the child and so yeah. forth as many parents do nowadays yeah and and so this child now is in as an adult is now a very selfish self-centered individual who believes everything should be on a plate and mm -hmm. and uh, that everything that happens in the world is for them to, <laughs> to <Yes>. enjoy <laughs> and there's no consequence for or and there's no responsibility that they need to bear and there's nothing they need to produce there's nothing they need to do in order to be a part of society now from the world's perspective today mm -hmm that person would seem to be in an idyllic position. Well, they seem to be getting everything on the platter. <laughs> they're wealthy, they, yeah. they're getting everything on the platter. Right? From God's perspective, that person's in an absolutely shocking position. Mm. Their soul is in a terribly dark condition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and God's laws are trying to correct that person. But most people on earth are not very, com what I would call, um, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Like they're not they're not in harmony with the way God's laws work. They're only in harmony with earth-based desires and passions. 
Yeah. So, so they're not in alignment with God's laws. Mm -hmm. so, so God's laws are trying to correct that selfish individual and mm. their behavior and their thoughts and desires. But many people in society will be assisting them, mm. pandering to them, trying to share in that lifestyle, if you like. And this is where, you know, it gets very, very confusing for, for, for the person to see what, what part is God delivering yes. and, and God's laws delivering and what part is actually of hum, human creation. So, and here, because God's laws are clearly more powerful than humans. Of course. Um, however. But a human's will. The, that's right. The, the, it's is the supreme. will. <laughs> the will is the the moment by moment decisions is the only thing that is not governed by God's it's it's, it's governed, governed by God's laws but it's not dictated to well it is dictated to to a degree <laughs> but only if the person chooses to <laughs> yeah. be so they can choose the opposite yes. the person's allowed to make a choice to disobey that's what i mean and and the person is making a choice to disobey and the world sees those choices as rewarding yes and so therefore the world has the viewpoint that that's the behavior to engage. Mm -hmm. But from God's perspective, the soul of that individual is degrading to such a terrible extent that they'll end up in a very, very terrible place after they pass. Mm -hmm. now, now, so the first reason why it doesn't always appear to be so, like reaping what you're sowing in the kind, yeah. is because on earth today, we have humanity has this viewpoint of what is good, which is in severe disharmony with what God's viewpoint of what is good. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we don't measure things the way God measures them anymore. We measure them using our own uh, rulers, if you like, our own, our own measuring stick, mm -hmm. our own standards, yep. not God's. And this is one reason why... Um, it's, we often get to the stage where we look at a person's life and we think, oh, look, at they're seemingly getting all these rewards, but we're not seeing all the penalties. Mm. In fact, that person themselves is in complete ignorance of all the soul-based penalties. And we, when we look at it, we're, because we're not sensitive to the soul-based penalties, we're not seeing the soul-based penalties either. So to clarify... This compensation in kind, are you saying that it only applies to the soul? Or does it not all, apply to our physical existence? No, all compensation only applies to the soul. Mm -hmm. And the physical existence is a flow on effect of what happens to mm -hmm. the soul. So my account balance yes. in, in the bank mm -hmm. uh, could be the is result. Is that a compensation in kind? Uh, no. No. Not necessarily. It could have come from your parents' money bank. It yes. could have come from you ripping off society. It could have come from you lying and stealing. It could have come from a number of different areas, all of which are out of harmony with love. Or it could have come from being in harmony with love. Yeah. It could have come from any one of these things, right? The problem is, is that we see a good bank balance as more important than a soul condition. Mm -hmm. And so we don't even measure the soul condition that was, a, that was squandered Yes. Obtaining the good bank balance. Yeah. And, and, and so this is where we get way out of harmony and therefore we get very confused. Mm -hmm. Instead of seeing the condition of the individual, which is what God's laws measure, the soul based condition of the individual, we only see the outward effects of what's happened. Mm -hmm. So we see a person in power and think, oh, and, we, and, and many times we honour them and respect them and so forth. We see a person who's educated, we honour and respect them, but we have no idea what soul-based things that they have done, said, thought, in order to obtain what they've obtained. Mm -hmm. And therefore, frequently, we're honouring somebody who's in a terribly dark condition. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that's what we often do. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can't assume that if someone has a good finances, for example, that it's because they have a good soul condition or that it was even the results of their own doing. Yes. Because it could be the results of many things, including their own negative doings, <laughs> their own unloving doings. But it could be because of the unloving doings of somebody else as well. You know? yeah. There's so many possible causes. But there must be a compensation in kind at some point in their existence. There is that be. what you're saying? There yep. will be, yes. There always is. There always is. If you've lied in order to obtain financial wealth, 
then you're going to have some quite severe compensation down the track for that, right? If and some of that is going to be financial at some point, even if it's after you've passed, mm -hmm. where you're now so embroiled in the monetary system you can't give it up. But there's no money anymore. So mm. what do you do with that? You know, and, ma and there's many people in the hells of the spirit world who are still embroiled in the financial system of the earth because they can't give up the concept of money, mm. right? And they've they've done everything they can to to lie, steal, cheat, and even sexually done things in order to attain it, and and uh, and all of those things need to be corrected. Yeah, uh, and and they're refusing to even correct them after the past. But they're in such terribly dark conditions. It's almost un most people on Earth would not be able to imagine their condition mm. that's so bad. Mm. And 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 so when, the trouble is we're not measuring it because we're not measuring it by God's standards. Mm. We're only measuring it by human standards. And this is where the human definition of love, which in it, which in our assistance groups we talk about being evil, you know, the <laughs> love erroneous <backwards>. version <laughs> of love, yeah, you know. Yeah. The, the, the the evil version of love if you like <laughs> the evil is a is a, a term that we define coined <laughs> or define as being the opposite to god's definition of love and frequently human's definition of love is opposite mm. to god's definition of love and remember that compensatory laws are all about god's lo laws and therefore god's definition of love being imposed mm. by the law mm. Mm. yeah so okay. it's important for us to understand that when something seemingly looks fine on the outside, God's laws don't measure it from what it looks like on the outside, no. like you do, or yes. you know, most people on earth do, you know. God's laws don't do that. Yeah. God's laws measure what's gone in the soul to create that condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but when it comes to the, so the compensation will occur based on what is in the soul. Yes. Yeah, but and that eventually will have physical and spiritual flow-ons, yeah. of course. Yes. Uh, so many times, for example, a person who is who's stolen from people to create wealth, eventually they get stolen from. Mm -hmm. Or if they haven't been stolen from, they lose their relationships because everyone around them knows that they're liars and cheaters. Yes. Yes. You know, and eventually they finish up losing a lot of their relationships. So while they may have wealth, they very frequently have a very unhappy life. As a result of their world, many mm. of them engage in irresponsible, self self irresponsible behaviour. You know where they are. You know taking a lot of drugs or drinking a lot, and that all has a flow on effect. That as mm. a result of their desire only for wealth and not to consider anything else. Mm. So you know there's a lot of flow on effects. It's just do we want to measure them? Yes. You know most of the time we don't want to measure them, and, mm. and that brings me to the second point really, which is we want to remain ignorant of what's got what the compensation actually is yes you know we want to ignore it completely we want to make out that this cancer that i have in my body <laughs> has to be have been created by someone else yeah even though it's my body i believe that it has to be created by someone else i'd even prefer to believe that it's some problem with god's system of things god you know nature mm -hmm. than it is with me mm. that's what i'd prefer to believe Right. And that's why most people never cure it yeah. and they die from it yeah. because they never find its actual cause. They don't see the compensation being implied. Yeah, yeah, mm. absolutely. Okay, and then you've also mentioned that very often we're reaping the benefits of other people's compensation, their, their sowing. Yeah, basically. so like my mother and father might have been very industrious people. For example, what might have happened is years ago, they might have grown up in a very uh, a society where there wasn't much money and they experienced what it was like to be poor. And they basically said, I don't want to experience what it's like to be poor anymore. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to be out, uh, through that process of working hard. I'm going to earn some money and so forth. And I'm going to establish a life where, uh, where you know, it, that, I, that I'm not poor anymore. Mm -hmm. And usually those kind of people don't spend much of their money. <laughs> no. And so what happens is they finish up leaving a lot of it to their children. Mm -hmm. Now, most of the time, the children of those kind of people are very selfish, self-involved, mm -hmm. very rarely do anything to help other people in society. And they squander all the money that mummy and daddy earned yes. because they don't appreciate how it got earned. Mm -hmm. um, and that's assuming, of course, you live in a Western society. In a, in a third world society, 
it's very, very hard, no matter how hard you work, yes. to get any more than your subsistence or, or existence. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you can't then say that a person in the third world who has just got their existence, who works very hard for it, is, is worse in a soul way than a person in the Western world who has had to work less but got more. Mm. In fact, the person in the Western world is actually in a lesser condition mm -hmm. than the person in the third world if, in if you just that measure issue. that one yes. aspect of a soul quality. Yes. Because the person in the third world obviously understands what it's like to live in an existence where you work very hard for it. The person in the Western world has very little appreciation frequently mm -hmm. of the gifts they've been given mm -hmm. by by having just been by chance born yes. in a location yeah. that that you know causes them to ha not have that or to not have to eke out an existence. Mm -hmm. So so again, we 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 frequently don't value where it came from, where yeah. where like particularly in Western society, we frequently don't value where things came from mm. and a lot of what we have comes from the hard work of others and a per person who's truly grateful will understand that and see that yeah a yeah. person who's not grateful will believe he created the whole thing for himself you know so basically you're saying when when it appears that i'm reaping something that i haven't sown there's a number of scenarios one i'm just kind of taking credit for the harvest that has got nothing to do with me. No, like frequently it's the harvest of others' hard work. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it could be that, well, it definitely is that I'm not measuring the full compensatory effects upon my soul and in the other aspects of as my God life. As God sees it. As God sees it. Because I see it as humans see it only. Yes. And not as God sees it. So, for example, in the example you gave with the parents who worked very, very hard, they obviously had a feeling, an unreleased feeling of lack and fear. So while they might have had a big bank balance, they were obviously still living with the compensated. Their fear would have been compounded. They, they couldn't enjoy their it. bank balance ever. Yeah, that's they, right. And that's why they never spent it. And that's yeah. why they gave it to their children. Yes. <laughs> so that's a compensation in kind. It is of, yes. of a kind. And yeah. the children squandering is a compensation for the parent yes. as well. The fact yeah. that the child now didn't have to earn it yeah. and did not appreciate it is also a compensation for the parent. So they're in the spirit world feeling the compensatory effects. Oh, trust me, yeah. you're in the spirit world and you earned millions of dollars and you gave it to your children and they just spent it, you know, or just blew it on things that are completely unnecessary in your mind, you're going to be pretty stressed about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and we're refusing to measure the effects on all of our energy systems, on our entire existence, our entire soul, the thoughts, words, actions, beliefs, yeah, uh, quality of life. We're yeah, not, we frequently we're not don't now. examine yep. emotions, for example, yes. or desires. We, we frequently don't even look at our thoughts. We think our thoughts are fine, no matter how bad or unloving they may be. Yep. As long as we don't do anything about it is the general gist of things. Yes. Uh, then when we're fine. Unfortunately for the majority of us too, we do everything we can to meet our addictions Right, everything we can, and uh, and we do a lot there. The people murder, you know, have abortions and all that to just to meet addictions. Like mm. at the end of the day, meeting addictions is a very high priority for the whole of humanity. Yeah, and we don't see all the negative consequences of that either on the soul because we don't measure them. We don't see that a lot of our diseases, physical diseases, are the direct results of our unloving behaviour mm. in the way in which we conducted ourselves in our life. And in particular, the way, what, the way we feel and think. Mm. We don't see our diseases as a consequence of that, mm. but they are. Mm -hmm. And this is where we're not measuring truthfully because mm. we don't want to. We want to remain ignorant. <laughs> we want to continue the sin yeah. and therefore remain ignorant as to what causes the sin, it causes the sort of the effects that we're seeing from the sin. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I think the compensation in kind is a, it's feels sometimes like a tricky one because we're so used to measuring the physical like illness or what I sowed an illness and now I've got an illness or you, it's sort of a um it's a funny one to get you get a feeling I don't based think so. understanding. like my feelings are most people on earth are physically centric and what I mean by that their whole life revolves around their physical existence yes now, if your whole life revolves around your physical existence 
you are going to struggle with conversation in kind mm. because you're not measuring the soul-based existence. Exactly. The effect on your soul and then the subsequent flow-on effects that it has onto your physical existence and your physical body. Yeah. You also, most people on earth also have no desire whatsoever to see that a, something that's internal to oneself is caused by an emotion or actions that are unloving that came from within themselves. So they're not willing to see that. They want to blame something external to themselves all the time. Yeah. And so they're not willing to examine truthfully the actual cause of something. Yeah. So for someone who's not willing to examine truthfully the actual cause, compensation in kind is going to be a very difficult concept to grasp. Yes because they're not really seeing what's going on at the soul level anymore. Yep. They're only looking at the physical. And, and also most people on Earth have no concept of a future aside from Earth. And so they feel that many of their decisions are justified by the fact that when they're dead, they're gone. Yes. And, and, and they don't exist anymore. So they then justify, even to the point of killing another person, will justify doing that yeah. in order to protect their own existence. Yeah. And, uh, and this in itself is driven by some pretty negative emotions, but frequently we only know about them after we've passed because we don't believe that mm. there is anything that's going to happen to us after we pass. We believe that engaging in any behaviour is fine as long as we survive. Yeah. And that in itself also is going to prevent us from seeing compensation in kind yeah. accurately. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. <laughs>